by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya wa mursaleen أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله نبي وز أبو مدريشان الحمد لله عز وجل you are watching Rise and shine, my dear of Bandar Nishal, MashaAllah. Every single day we begin by listening to the Tilawat of the Glorious Quran, the recitation of the Quran al Kareem. We also have the Urdu translation along with that, my dear of Bandar Nishal. And today we shall be doing the same too. Which surah are we on? We're still on chapter number 12. Surah number 12, my dear viewers, which you should all know by now, is Surah Yusuf. Yes, we have heard about the story of Hazrat Yusuf. Alayhi salatu wasalam, this great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had a dream where he saw 11 stars, he saw the sun and the moon prostrating before him. And many years later, Allahu Akbar, he understood the interpretation to that dream that his parents, the 11 brothers, had prostrated before him. And this was the great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. But is this the end of the story? Or is it not? Let's continue the chapter and then we shall find out, inshallah, let's go to the tilawat of the glorious Quran. Please do remember that whilst the Quran is being recited, we should give our full attention to the recitation of the Quran. And as well as this, uh, make good intentions because, as you know, the more good intentions you make, the more reward you shall gain, inshallah. على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما الله تعالى كي بناه ما أتاه شيطان مردود سي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله كي نام سي شروع جو نهاية مهربان رحم والا وَكَأَيِّنْ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ اور کتنی نشانیاں ہیں آسمانوں اور زمین میں کہ لوگ ان پر گزرتے ہیں اور ان سے بے خبر رہتے ہیں وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ اور ان میں اکثر وہ ہیں کہ اللہ پر یقین نہیں لاتے مگر شرک کرتے ہوئے اَفَأَمِنُوا أَن تَأْتِيَهُمْ غَاشِيَةٌ مِّنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ اَوْ تَأْتِيَهُمُ السَّاعَةُ بَغْتَةً وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ کیا اس سے نڈر ہو بیٹھے کہ اللہ کا عذاب انہیں آ کر گھیر لے یا قیامت ان پر اچانک آ جائے اور انہیں خبر نہ ہو قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ اَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ تم فرماؤ یہ میری راہ ہے میں اللہ کی طرف بلاتا ہوں میں اور جو میرے قدموں پر چلیں دل کی آنکھیں رکھتے ہیں اور اللہ کو پاکی ہے اور میں شریک کرنے والا نہیں وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِن قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى اور ہم نے تم سے پہلے جتنے رسول بھیجے سب مرد ہی تھے جنہیں ہم وحی کرتے 
اور سب شہر کے ساکن تھے تو کیا یہ لوگ زمین میں چلے نہیں تو دیکھتے ان سے پہلوں کا کیا انجام ہوا اور بے شک آخرت کا گھر پرہیزگاروں کے لیے بہتر تو کیا تمہیں عقل نہیں یہاں تک کہ جب رسولوں کو ظاہری اسباب کی امید نہ رہی اور لوگ سمجھے کہ رسولوں نے ان سے غلط کہا تھا اس وقت ہماری مدد آئی تو جسے ہم نے چاہا بچا لیا گیا اور ہمارا عذاب مجرم لوگوں سے پھیرا نہیں جاتا لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم بے شک ان کی خبروں سے عقل مندوں کی آنکھیں کھلتی ہیں یہ کوئی بناوٹ کی بات نہیں لیکن اپنے سے اگلے کاموں کی تصدیق ہے اور ہر چیز کا مفصل بیان اور مسلمانوں کے لیے ہدایت اور رحمت سوری stated and mentioned within the Qur'an al-Kareem. There are many stories which shows as well that stories, my dear viewers, have a deep effect on people. There are many lessons to be learned from a story. Many things we can take from a story, my dear viewers. And then towards the end, the last verse of the glorious Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that within these stories, there are lessons to be learned. Within these stories that we have, there are lessons to be learned. But it mentions something that lessons to be learned for whom? Who is it that shall learn these lessons? And it states within the Quran, الْأَلْبَاب For those people who possess reason, for those people who can think and contemplate, for such people, there are so many lessons to be learned. Allahu Akbar, and no doubt the story of Hazrat Yusuf as we had heard, um, subhanallah, there were so many lessons to be taken. Having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remaining patient, when, when suffering through a difficulty, remaining steadfast, patience upon both the parents and the children. So maybe it's a child who's put through difficulty. For the child to remain uh, patient, inshallah. For the person who has been afflicted, for them to be patient also for the parents because it's difficult for the parents too sometimes a child has been possibly accused maybe falsely accused even if it's true the child has done something wrong or sometimes the child has been hurt he has been harmed sometimes the child passes away even you know it's said that the, what's normal is for the people to bury their parents but it's very rare for a parent to bury the child. So, you know, when these things happen, and sometimes some people think, oh, what's it got to do with them? It's just me. No, but the parents are parents, aren't they? Parents love you no matter what you have done, no matter what your situation, even if sometimes, yes, you've been rude to them. Parents have this love for their children. And they're her too. 
So it's a lesson for parents also need to be patient. Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. He loved Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam even more than the rest. But he remained patient. He had faith. Subhanallah. No doubt he was a, a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then sometimes you will be placed in difficult situations. And you must not ever give in. But you must remain strong and true to your own faith. Remain true to your own faith. Because Alhamdulillah we believe that this is, you know, nothing can match it. So this was Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. And then what? Repentance. The brothers ultimately when they saw the, their wrongdoing, yes, you can say they were put in a difficult situation because they needed Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam could have had them in prison, could have taken revenge. In fact, that's another lesson to take. That he could have taken revenge. Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam chose to forgive. Forgiveness. They ultimately, the brothers, they repented, didn't they? They repented. Repentance, utmost important. Uh, and it's, to be honest, if we were to think about it even more, then there would be so many more lessons we could take from the life of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. No doubt, many lessons could be taken, my dear viewers. But, you know, the moral of the story, seek lessons from, from stories from the Quran al kareem and yes read the tafsir because there are so many details which these scholars have given us which the Sahaba Kiram, which Rasulullah sallallahu has given us there's, there's much more to this him later marrying that same lady who we mentioned before Rati Zulaikha you know the, the, subhanallah there are many more things behind it and the story goes into much more detail which you would really enjoy but what do you have to do you have to take the Quran read the Quran read the translation as well as the explanation inshallah as well as the commentary and my dear viewers of Mandarin channel uh, remember that when you do read any sort of Islamic books about creed um, whatever the book may be. My dear viewers of Madhani Shalom, Alhamdulillahi Azza wa we have listened to the Tilawat of the Glorious Quran. Remember that the Quran al Karim is, is completely, is, is, it possesses eloquence, rhetoric, beautiful, in the most perfect of manners. Nothing can match it. That's why we, that's why we stay. It's mu'jiz, meaning it renders everybody else, anything else, incapable and redundant. Alhamdulillah, because of the beauty of the glorious Quran. But the point is, is when we realize that one of the one of these, you could say, rules of what eloquence, or one of the beautiful attributes of the glorious Quran, is that we find that sometimes, depending on what's being spoken about, the words which are chosen have a hard um, sense and ending and. Uh, phonetical when a person is actually stating it and saying it it has this uh, sense of hard and sharp and strong so you could just tell by the words even if a person doesn't understand you can tell that this person is speaking about just by the words being used you could tell that this person is speaking about what um, chaos difficulty destruction hardship and when he's talking about peaceful things, the words themselves would be soft. My dear viewers of the channel, you're watching Rise and Shine. We have listened to the Quran al kareem Let's move on to the Nad Sharif of the greatest of all mankind, the peace of our hearts and our minds, the most generous and kind, the last and final prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. For those that would be aware of the words, try to read along. Let's listen to the Na'al Sharif. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Madina I'm 
جنت کہا کرتے ہیں اہل حق جسے او شاق کی جنت کہا کرتے ہیں اہل حق وہ ہے سہرا تیرا رہنے والے سبز گمبد کے مدینے میں خطاؤں پر خطائے ہیں گناہگاروں کی جانب سے خطاؤں پر خطائے ہیں مگر تجھ سے عطائے رہنے والے سبز گمبد کے مدینے میں سر سوئے آدم کس کے باعث ہے فرشتوں کا جھکا سر سوئے آدم کس کے باعث ہے تیرا ہی نور تھا رہنے والے سبز گمبد کے مدینے میں سے کفر کی اسلام پر چھائی گھٹا چاروں طرف سے کفر کی اسلام پر چھائی نظر فرما ذرا رہنے والے سبز گمبد کے مدینے میں وہ روزہ جس پہ ہے جبریل بھی سو جان سے قربا ان آنکھوں سے دکھائے رہنے والے سبز گمبد کے مدینے میں پھر جمیل قادری کیوں کر خدا ہے تیرا واصف پھر جمیل قادری کیوں کر کرے تیری سنائے رہنے والے سبز گمبد کے مدینے میں
Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madani Shalom, you are watching Rise and Shine. Alhamdulillahi azzadu. We've just listened to this, uh, mashallah, beautiful kalam. My dear viewers of Madani Shalom, what is today's topic? Today, mashallah, we have a beautiful topic because um, as I don't know if it's this year, but I know on in in a number of years, a number of years. Now many people they they on Google, many people search so many questions. They nearly everything has become a norm now, hasn't it? Where if you're not sure about something, what's the first thing you do? You'll just Google it. And in some cases, my dear it was you know maybe it's good that you are interested in learning, but you need to be very very careful as to where you are seeking your information, where you are getting it from. And we are living in an era where everything, whenever we have a question, whenever we are doubtful about anything, the first thing we will do is we'll go on Google. And subhanAllah, remember, somebody writes things on there. We can write things on there. Um, that's what Google is, just a search engine, isn't it? So anybody can write anything. So you need to be very careful as to where you get your answers from, my dear viewers. Because if you're going to Google it, you can, you will always, nearly every single question you'll ask, you'll get conflicting answers. There'll never be just one answer to a simple question. Uh, never possibly. There'll always be some sort of conflicting answers. So we need to be very, very careful. But why is it that I mention this? The reason is, is because one of the most searched questions um, of, I think, many years, not just one particular year, one of the many searched questions was, what is love? Some people were thinking, oops, I'm one of those people who search for it. Allahu, Allahu Akbar. That's the question. What, I think it was just these three words. What is love? Or related, you know, how can I find love? And, you know, things like this. Uh, related questions to this. These, and why? Because we are living in a world, in an era where things, you know, and everything surrounds this world, love, whether that be books, you know, because there's a lot of money in it. There's a lot of money in it, my dear viewers. And many people have their own interpretations. Many people will tell you all sorts of things. And people are spending lots of money on this and other people, well, some people are spending it, it's going into the pockets of other people. So this, my dear viewers of Mother Nature Channel, love is something which so many people wish and they desire because we've heard about it so much. You know, this is what true love is. Or, you know, how can I find true love? What is true love? This is what it is. Or this is how you can attain love. This is how you do this. This is how, etc., etc. We are just surrounded by this one theme, this theme of love all the time. Now, Love itself is very generic, isn't it? There's the love of a mother for the child. The love of a mother for the child, which Allahu Akbar, what can compare to that? There is something, and inshallah we shall mention that. But generally, what can compare to the love a mother has for her own child? The mother would do anything for the child to keep the child happy. The mother would take all the pain on herself if she had the option, she would take any pain her child may be suffering. She would take all the pain, the hardship on herself and just wish for the child to be safe and protected. And it's not that the father doesn't love the child, Allahu Akbar, but just generally, nobody can, nothing can match the love of a mother, can it? Um, subhanallah. But it doesn't mean the fathers don't love the children. Of course, yes, they do. And yes, they would take this too. But the fathers just don't, ex just generally, they just don't express it as much. Um, and sometimes it's the other way around, by the way. So some would be thinking, that ain't right. Allahu Akbar. But generically, generally, uh, most of the time, this is how it is. So there's a love of a parent, let's just say, just for some people. Uh, a parent for the child. There's the love. Uh, between a brother and another brother or a brother and a sister or a sister and a sister. You know, siblings, the love between siblings. And the, which is still nothing in comparison to the parent, child, etc. There's a the love of the grandparents. And then my dear of Mother Nishan, there's the love for uh, a person's husband or wife. 
There's the love, the mutual love between husbands and wives. There's the love for other things too. It may not be humans. It may be animals. It may be um, love for, you know, even scenery, love for travel, love for books. You know, you can love all sorts of things, can't we? Uh, some people, they, you know, they love books. And they think, yes, I love books. But this is a different type of love, isn't it? Uh, you may love, love the world, love for the world. So many people have love for the world. And if you use a motherly channel, the strongest of love, you would say, is possibly that of the mothers. But then it's also said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more than your own mother. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. And there's the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is more important than any other love. There is love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why we say, you know, this is the essence. A person cannot be a true believer until he loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even more than his parents. Until he loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even more than his own children. Until he loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than the entire world. Love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then along with love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, to truly love somebody, you would never wish to bring them any pain, but neither those people who that person loves too. So if you were to really love somebody, let's just say somebody was to really love their wife, but then he was to speak ill of his wife's best friends or his wife's siblings or his wife's uh, parents, if he was to speak ill about them, or let's just say his wife's children who are not his own children, let's just say he was to speak ill of his wife's children, then that's not true love for the wife, is it? Because sometimes even um, you know that would hurt the mother if you were to speak about any mother's child pejoratively, disrespectfully. If you were to speak about her parents. This is one example I'm giving. A person who truly loves the wife wouldn't do so. Why? Because you know, I'll just rather stay quiet. Why? Because this is going to hurt. Even if something may be true. But if he knows that this is going to hurt her, or this is going to hurt somebody I love, then they, they would, some things they would just take upon themselves. They'd be like, okay, that person's hurt me. Or maybe her family, any, anybody. It could be her friend, it could be anybody. It didn't even have to be her, it could be the other way around, between the wife and the husband. If she loses a, loses a husband, maybe the husband's mother or father has hurt her. And she would think, no, but I don't want to say anything negative about them because that may hurt him. This may hurt my partner. Why? Because, and this is what proper love is, isn't it? Where sometimes you just stay quiet and you'll take the pain upon yourself. But if you use a Madani channel, as I was saying, love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those people who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved and the, the beauty of this is that those people, my dear viewers, are known as the companions. Well, it's not only the companions, others too. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved all of the companions. And he has even stated the importance of, you know, when the name of the companions comes, then you remain silent. You remain respectful. You respect and honor the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if we were to truly love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to have true Iman, we must love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than our parents and everybody, everything else. Remember this, we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than our parents, our children, the entire world. But if we were to truly love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we would also love every single companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We would never speak ill or negative, or speak neg you know, negatively about any companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but rather we would love them. Why? Because they are those people who were around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were those people who helped Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were those people who aided and accepted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
But if you zaman al we must love every companion of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa Every companion. And this is beautiful, alhamdulillah. Why? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa loved them. And we can never ever even imagine to speak ill. Never imagined. And this is, is, is simple, Madiba. How, how does it happen? Meaning, you think, is this person, is it a companion? Is it not? If it's a companion, well, subhanallah, the dust below their feet is, remember this, the dust below their feet is greater than, you know, us and our parents and everybody. The dust below the feet of any companion, any companion. The question is, are they a companion? Any companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the beauty. So we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love, we must love the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved his companions. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taught us to have love and respect and honor the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But my dear of Madhari Shalom, today's topic and subhanAllah, I'm taking some time to get to it. This is part of it. Today's topic is love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us himself, In kuntum tuhibboon Allah, fattabi'uni. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Qur'an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is told to tell the people that if, in kuntum tuhibboon Allah, if you people, you claim you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَاتَّبِعُونِ Then follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Act upon the traditions, the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. One thing is for you to love somebody else. Another is for that person to love you too. Then look, everyone, you'll, you'll have somebody you love. You love somebody. And many times you'll find that sometimes you love somebody, but that person doesn't love you back. And maybe you think, oh, I love this person. I love, you know, it could be selective. This is what he is now, isn't it? You think, oh, I really love this person. I'm, you know, so I'm the biggest fan. I'll do, you know, anything. I'll, I'll go to whatever it may be. I'll just, just leave it there. But you support them and you, you know, you say, yes, this, this is who I support. I even support a football team, whatever it may be. I really love them. If somebody says anything about them, they'll say, you are offended. You know, you feel bad, you feel sudden. This is sometimes, this is what we see, isn't it? We love. But, okay, we're speaking about football now. Many people, what do they say? They say, I love this team. I love this person so much. I love this particular team. I'm not going to be mentioning no teams. I love this team so much. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. I'm a supporter of this team. And, and honestly, whenever somebody says that to me, I ask them a simple question. I say to them, okay, you say you love this team. Now, do any one of them even know you exist? Honestly, I say, I say this to them. And every single time, I think, every single time, they're like, oops, you know, no, they don't. That's the reality. You love somebody, but what's beautiful if they were to love you back? Now, sometimes we claim to live, love these celebrities or whoever they may be, and honestly, they are not even aware of our existence, whether we exist or not. They do not even know whether we, we are alive or not. Our names, forget, forget even our names. As I said, our existence, they have no idea of it. Loving somebody, my dear viewers of Mandarin Channel, Naturally, you have this wish, this desire for them to love you back. And these are people of this world. Imagine loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving you back. In kuntum tuhibboon Allah, fattabi'uni. If you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, follow me. Follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then, yuhbibkum Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you back too. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you too. And subhanallah, 
When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a person, Allah, we shall hear more on that very, very soon. My dear viewers of the Din channel, um, let's go to the daily reminder and then we shall continue. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. There was a famous uh, story about a beggar, it was a woman who used to beg. And one day she came to the court of the king to beg. And the, she was beautiful. So the king offered to marry her. She married the king and she became the queen of the, the country. But whenever the king used to come to her, always she was in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And she spent maximum time doing the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and thanking Allah Azza wa Jal day and night. And when the king asked her the reason for this, he said, O oh king, I was a pauper. I was a beggar. I used to go to the streets and beg for food and money to make a, you know, my time go by. You have taken me on board, but this is the mercy and the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. I don't deserve these bounties. So whenever I see them, I remember my past times. And that's why I fall into prostration. One of the problems we have today is that we forget about the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal, the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal that surround us from head to toe and every direction. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the glorious Quran, and if you would count graces of Allah Azza wa Jal, never would you be able to count them. Health, safety, nourishment, clothing, the air, the water we have, the family we have, the houses we live in, the cars we have, the, every single thing that we have. We have all that life has to offer, and yet we remain ignorant. We have at our disposal an amazing body, and yet we ignore the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. We have two eyes, two ears, a tongue, lips, all the organs that function properly. And yet, we are depressed. Why? Could you imagine yourself walking without feet? Could you imagine yourself crawling on the floor? Could you imagine yourself walking around without the ability to see? All of these things, even the food we eat, is a great blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. The delicious foods that we taste, and the taste buds that Allah Azza wa Jal has created, all of these things, if you reflect upon them, and reflect upon your power of reasoning, your power of understanding, Allahu Akbar, you would fall into prostration and thank Allah Azza wa Jal. You wouldn't give your ability to see or hear for all the money in the world. What a great blessing this is. And yet, little do we contemplate and little do we thank Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu Akbar. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Madi viewers of Madan Channel, you are watching Rise and Shine. Alhamdulillahi azza wa jal. Madi viewers, mashallah. Um, we are listening, we are hearing about the for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love we should have, how we should try to develop love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The various ways of one, as we said, if you wish to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Try to implement the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and inshallah ta'ala, then you can attain the love or attain, yes, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah azza wa jal. As well as this, my dear viewers of Madhani channel, subhanallah, one other thing is of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, by fulfilling the fara'id, all the necessary, the obligatory actions, those which have been prescribed, those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us. And this is not how the fard even comes before the sunnah. So firstly, by the fara'id, the obligatory actions, and then after having performed the obligatory actions, to perform more nawafil extra actions. To perform extra actions, my dear viewers of Madhani Channel, as much as possible. No doubt, first comes the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there's the, the obligatory acts, there's the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
and then as much nawafil, as much extra uh, forms of worship as possible, inshallah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, this hadith Qudsi Sharif, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the servant, how is it that he gets closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He doesn't become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by anything in comparison to when he performs obligatory actions. So first is performing the obligatory actions. And then he continues to form extra actions after that. Extra good deeds. He worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that then I love this person. And what happens when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a person? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that he becomes the ears by which he hears, the eyes by which he sees, the hand by which he grasps, the legs by which he walks. And then if a person was to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it doesn't say what about it, just says anything. If he was to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants it to this person. All the du'as a person asks, he is granted these things, subhanallah. But if you someone shall worship, we need to increase our worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we build love. And subhanallah, there's a beautiful story mentioned. He said that once, Hazrat Malik ibn Dinar, rahmallahu ta'ala. He says, I was traveling to Makkah al-Mukarramah for Hajj to perform the Hajj pilgrimage. I was traveling to Makkah al-Mukarramah by a caravan and I saw a young man who was traveling on foot. I saw a young man who was traveling on foot without any provisions whatsoever. This young man was traveling for Hajj. What did he take with him? How much food? Imagine we were to go now and imagine going by foot, subhanAllah. I remember some possibly weeks now, maybe months ago, we were speaking about walking to Hajj. You know, may Allah Ta'ala grant me the ability to one day and the means, everything, the provisions, inshallah, one day to do so. But speaking about provisions, look, that I wouldn't dare to just start walking now and expect to get there for Hajj. But one thing, I don't think I would be able to, due to many reasons. But another is, and then without provision, this is even with provisions. Well, if we could, if we were to, well, some provision, for example, if we could book a plane, you know, just book a ticket, and then that's obviously possible. Uh, go via other means, even on a car, it wouldn't be as difficult. But I'm speaking on walking. But then with no provisions, even if we would go via plane, we would still need provisions. Even if we would go via, well, the plane itself is one too. Even if we were to go via car, we would still need money, you know, and petrol, we'll need all sorts of things. But then walking, you'll need food, you need so much food. What would a person do? Allahu Akbar. This person was walking to Hajj. He was walking to Hajj, but he didn't have anything with him. He didn't have an animal. He was on foot. He didn't have an animal. He didn't have you know, extra clothes. He didn't have food, drink, water, whatever it may have been. He didn't have anything. And he was walking to Hajj too. Hazrat Malik bin Dira, rahmallahu ta'ala, he says that I said salam to him. I gave him salam. And then he replied to the salam. I then said to him, oh young man, where have you come from? Where is it that you have come from? He says, from him. Meaning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, okay. He says, I then asked, where is, it, where is it you are going to? He replies to him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I then say, where are your provisions? He replies, they are upon his mercy. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I then said, you will not be able to make such a long journey without water and other provisions. Do you not have anything? Do you not have anything else? He says, I took five letters as my provisions for the journey at the time of leaving home. He says, for this journey, yes, I did make a preparation. What did I bring with me? I brought five letters, not letters as in with information on them, no, single letters. I brought with me five letters. 
And he says, what are these letters? He replies, these letters are Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, and Swad. These are the letters I have brought with me. Five letters. When I ask, what do you mean? What do these five letters mean? He says, the first Kaf is for Kafi, meaning sufficient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffice, suffices for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for me. This is the first Kaf. Then he says, Ha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my guide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my guide. And then, Ya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my protector. Ain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a knower. He knows, he has his ilm, he has the knowledge, he knows everything. And Sa'ad. And Sa'ad refers to what? The one who is truthful. Subhanallah. He says that I brought these five letters and he then says the one whose companion is the fulfiller of needs, the guide, he is the protector, he is the knower of all things and the one who is truthful. He says how can he die or be worried and why should he carry the burden of provisions of water? If I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why do I need water? Why do I need food? Why do I need anything else? Hazrat Malik ibn Dinar rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, when I heard this, subhanAllah, he himself was taken aback. He was astonished and amazed by this, the sincerity, the confidence this person had, the piety he displayed. You know, he was totally amazed by it. And he sees that this person does not even have a qameez, a shirt. And he offers him his own qameez, but he refuses. And he says, oh, Sheikh, he says, remaining without a qameez is better than wearing this shirt, the qameez of this world. Because one will face accountability for using its halal things and torment for using its haram. Allah, he did not even wish to take this shirt. Why? Because a person shall be held accountable on the day of judgment. Allah, with the fear too, so this hope, this fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. This is true love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where a person becomes completely independent of everything else. He doesn't care about anything else. This, this is just, this is, as we, yes, we can say this is on another level. This is on a complete another level. Allahu Akbar. It then continues. Now when the night fell, he looked towards the sky and he began to make dua. In these words, he says, O the one who becomes pleased with the obedience of his servants and slaves and who is not harmed by the sins of his slaves. He says, bless me with that thing, that worship that pleases you and forgive the thing, meaning the sins, that does not harm you. He then places his ihram and he then uh, puts his ihram. And the people, when you put on the ihram, people recite labbaik. So the people recited labbaik very loudly. But he was silent. Hazrat Malik bin Dinar, ta'ala, he says, that why is it that you are quiet? Why is it that you are silent? And he gives the answer he gives, he says that I could not say labbaik. He says, I could not say labbaik. Why? Because I fear that if I say labbaik, and what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, la labbaik, he says, what if I was to say labbaik? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to reply, la labbaik, I do not accept your labbaik. Allah, with this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said that he then left and I could not see him throughout my entire journey. So Malik bin Dinar says, I did not see him at all until at a place known as Mina, when they come towards Mina, he says that he was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's calling out to Allah ta'ala, the Ya Allah, people have sacrificed animals and attained your closeness. I have nothing to attain your closeness except for my life. Ya Allah, I offer you my life. Please accept it. It's then said that he screams loudly and he passes away right there. 
And then they hear a voice saying that this person is the beloved servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has been killed by the sword of divine love. Allahu Akbar. He was then given the, um, he was then buried, etc. Now, my dear viewers of Manshal, subhanAllah, this story is, uh, subhanAllah, brilliant, beautiful. Many lessons to be taking from this story. But this is, this is true love. True love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where a person, when he truly loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he loses interest in the world. He loses interest in worldly things. He only cares about the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is true love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And true love, my dear viewers of the channel, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acting upon the sharia. Yes, performing everything in accordance to the sharia. Remember, this is necessary. You, and a person cannot claim, I truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm just going to, yes, be alone maybe, but he doesn't pray his salah or anything like this. This is not love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no. This is rather the total opposite. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love this person in order to make him steadfast upon salah. Remember what we said was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, it becomes the ears, the eyes by which you see, the ears by which you hear, etc, etc. What does this mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his eye from wrongdoing. Protects his ears from listening to wrongdoing. Some people claim to have a love, true love in Allah ta'ala and they commit sins. No, this is not love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Neither does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love such people. And if we are going to move to the daily hadith shift and then inshallah we shall continue. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Three blessed sayings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam about finding faults in others. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam is the perfect example for us. He is a role model for us. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam is a personality of the best character. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam is a personality whom Muslims look up to. His eating, his teaching, his drinking, his sitting, his standing, each and everything is actually an example for us. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam lived a life and set it as an example for us to follow. So looking at the advices of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, three great advices of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam about finding faults in people that what sort of a discouraged act it is. Allahu Akbar, the Prophet of mankind, the peace of our heart and mind, the most generous and kind Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has said, the person who discloses the faults of a Muslim in this world, the person who lets out the secrets, the person who reveals out the hidden faults of a person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal that person's faults up to this extent that that person will be humiliated in his own home. Allahu Akbar. Another narration about the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has said, the one who removes the difficulty from a Muslim, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala shall remove a difficulty from him. And the person who conceals the faults of a Muslim, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala shall conceal that person's faults. Allahu Akbar. Help a person. Allah will help you. Remove a difficulty. Allah will remove your difficulties, inshallah. In fact, Another wonderful hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has said, the person who conceals and hides the faults of a believer, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala shall grant him entry into paradise. Subhanallah It may sometimes be hard upon our inner self. Right? If we have found a fault in someone, we can't, you know, just relax and, you know, sit down. We want to let it out to someone. You know what happened? You know this happened? You know that happened? No, 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 no. If we just make sabr, what have we got to lose? We just have to lose a bit on the aspect of temporary fun. But what do we get in return? We attain Jannah in return. We attain the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah shall hide our faults. We are, you know, sinners. Imagine if our faults are disclosed on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall hide our faults. We make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us 
you know, among those people who have respect on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the shade of His throne on the Day of Judgment. These few sacrifices in this life shall turn out to be of great means for us on the Day of Judgment. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam Many viewers of Muslim Nation, Alhamdulillahi Azza wa Jal You are watching Rise and Shine, MashaAllah That was the daily Hadith Sharif Alhamdulillah, we're speaking about love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And yes, you must remember Love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entails what? Acting upon the Sharia Following in the path the Sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. How can we attain this law? Now subhanAllah to this level, you know, this story we heard of Hazrat Malik bin Dinar an, and this um, young man which he spoke about, which he tells us about. This is no doubt something which is just on a completely, it's like on a whole new level, isn't it? And possibly, but nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible, my dear viewers. Um, can we attain such a level? There are some levels we can never match. Rasulullah has told us, and we must remember this. This is our aqeedah. That of prophets. That of the companions of Rasulullah It doesn't matter how great, how much of a big wali you become. You can never attain anywhere near the rank of the companions of Rasulullah And then the tabi'oon, the atba'u tabi'een. My dear viewers of Madani Channel, yes, attaining a rank and something like this, so this, this is huge. And it's true, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? By, as we said. But there's another thing we can do, and this is make dua. Yes, to make dua. Remember, the dua is a weapon. The dua is a weapon. It's the weapon of a believer, Salah al Mu'min. It is the essence of worship. Dua, my dear viewers. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Ya Allah, I ask you for your love. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Hazrat Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam says, Ya Allah, grant me love for yourself. Ya Allah, grant me your love. And also the love of those who love you. Allahu Akbar. Says, ya Allah, make your love more beloved to me. Min nafsi. Even more than myself. He says, Make your love even more beloved to me than myself. He says, Even more beloved than cold water on a very, very hot day. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, true love for the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And even when the child must love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we must follow the uh, sunnahs and this is the key to having the love uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all for now. Inshallah wa we shall be hearing much more of rise and shine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. We have learned and heard about love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this love. Love for himself, love for Rasulullah, love for the companions, love for the ulama. Love for the scholars and the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you have this, only then can you truly find success. And my dear viewers, yes, people looking, searching for love. Remember, we can only try, even if that's marital love, we can only find this within Islam, within the teachings, within the, um, and there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that builds this love. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is proper love. Some people confuse, some people even think, oh yes, this is love. So people call it love marriages. And sometimes when people say to me, love marriage, I say, how is it a love marriage? Do you understand what a love marriage is? Remember, following the Quran, the Sharia, the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, within this we can find true love, inshallah ta'ala. We can find true and eternal happiness, inshallah ta'ala. But that's more than that another time. We've run out of time. Uh, inshallah azza wa we shall return, hopefully. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah.
Even the darkest night will end And the sun will rise and shine And the sun will rise and shine